Hello, and thank you for joining us for this episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL TV where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is Willet Skillet. Uh, we made recipes in skillets. I'm Elizabeth, and as usual, I'm joined today by Katie and Beth to tell us about their recipes. So Katie, tell us about what you made in a skillet. All right, I will. Um, funnily enough, my recipe comes from this book called Will It Skillet? So that was pretty fun. Um, this book is by Dan Shumsky. And the recipe that I chose to make is for chicken pot pie in a skillet. Um, I thought it sounded really easy to do and a nice take on an old comfort recipe. So gave it a shot. Um, you start out by making your topping, which is saltine crackers, freshly grated Parmesan cheese, dried ground sage, and then melted butter. And you just mix that all together. And I honestly thought that this was going to be sort of like wet and clumpy kind of, but it turned out being like pretty nice and crumbly. So that was, that was nice to see. And then you just preheat your oven and then you preheat your skillet. You make your filling. So you add butter to the skillet. And then um, once that's melted, you add onions and celery. And the recipe says to... Uh, cook it until the onions are softened like 10 minutes but I would say cook it until the celery is softened because the only issue that I had with this recipe was that the celery came out a little bit crunchy in the first meal leftovers it didn't really matter because it got softened but I would say I would probably actually put my celery in before the onion let that cook a little bit then put the onion in so I'll definitely do that next time um once that is, or while that's cooking in a small bowl, you combine um, broth and milk. And then in another bowl, you combine flour, thyme, salt, and pepper. You sprinkle the flour mixture over your onions and celery, and then you gradually add in the broth and milk mixture like a quarter at a quarter of the amount at a time. The first time you put it in, it gets thick really fast. And then the last time you put it in, it takes like five minutes to get like nice and thickened up. It's actually really easy to do. So it's a nice procedure that they lay out. Once that's all been added, you stir in your chicken. And so it's cooked, cooked, um, cubed chicken. And then, uh, they call for frozen peas, but I used a frozen mixed veg. So it had peas, green beans, carrots, and corn. Cause I like a lot of veg in my pot pie. And that turned out great. I'm really glad I decided to do that. Um, I have actually a picture of it before I put the topping on. So you can see that. Um, and that's what you do next is you sprinkle the topping all over the top of your skillet and you put the skillet in the oven. You bake it for about 10 minutes until your topping is brown and then the edges are bubbly. Um, take it out, put it on a baking rack, let it cool slightly about 10 minutes and then you eat it. Uh, I will definitely make this again. I would make it for company. I would also make it just for myself because the leftovers were so good to just like have it as a nice hot meal during the week, uh, during the winter. So yeah, this was very nice. I liked it a lot. Oh, it sounds really easy. I'm impressed. Yeah. I saw yeah. some chicken pot pie skillet recipes when I was looking for what to do for this. And I was kind of daunted a little bit just because I'm like, for some reason it looks like that it looks like like I feel like with the baking of the like topping I was like oh this is going to be like difficult but that sounds yeah. quite easy yeah this is a nice simple version I like yeah that was big for me <laughs> can you tell us what the crust was again it was kind of went out a little bit oh was it, yeah I saw my internet connection was a little unstable there <laughs> it's uh saltine crackers freshly grated Parmesan cheese, dried ground sage, and unsalted butter, melted. Oh. Just mix it all together. I seriously thought it was going to, I was like, ooh, is that going to be clumpy or what? But it was great. Yeah. Good well, stuff. 
I did the the saltine crust as well. Remember? Yeah, that's yeah. right. You did that last time, and I was thinking, oh, I've got a saltine crust coming up too. So mm -hmm. apparently, that's a thing. Yeah, that sounds really yummy. And like I say that every time, I think. <laughs> but yeah, I um, but I have I have something up my sleeve that we could actually work together on. Oh well, please tell me. May us. I? <laughs> May I? All right. Well, this one is insanely easy. It was chicken. It was a whole chicken in a skillet and then roasted for like, oh, 30 minutes on 450 and then 30 minutes on 425. The hardest part was honestly tucking the, the wings under. I, I had, it was just under a four pound um, chicken whole chicken. Uh, this one didn't have giblets in it. And if you did, you just remove them. Uh, but you salt and pepper generously inside and out. And it said salt even more than you think you should. Um, so I did. And honestly, it was chicken, salt, pepper. That's the recipe. Um, you also nip the, or, you know, the, the wing skin a little bit, so it doesn't bubble up. And um, I have a picture after it came out of the oven. And uh, it was crispy skin, super, super juicy. I don't typically like white meat and it was so juicy. So this would be a really great way to get yourself a chicken, make it. And then for the second day, or, you know, make your pot pie. Um, I, I was just really blown away at how simple. I felt like I was cheating in a way because it was so simple. <laughs> but it was good. That's awesome. Thank I'm you. like always looking for a new way to make chicken. So wonderful. It sounds, sounds great. Super simple. I love it. Was there any stovetop action or just skillet in oven? Skillet in oven. Nice. Um, I also uh, roasted some uh, potato cubes and, and carrots mm -hmm. uh, in a different pan um, or different sheet. And um so I the one of the pictures I have with the veggies in it, which I, I think will be evident, but um even though you know more for styling. Um <laughs> but I I was really amazed at how juicy it was. And then I made made soup that night and then yesterday, because I did this Monday, um with the plan that I knew we were gonna be traveling and I'd be really tired and that way to have some food for the week. For three days but yeah it was a great great thing to do and super crispy how long was it in the oven for i you might have said um, that. an hour like okay. 30 minutes on the 450 and 30 on 425 nice yeah. awesome yeah oh and one of the notes said um that someone puts squeezes a lemon in it too which of course you know that would be yummy and and i think they put in some butter but it was fine with just salt and pepper so yeah. Anyway, well, Elizabeth, how did what did you skill it? Okay, so this was an exciting one for me. I received a big, nice cast iron skillet as a wedding gift um, when I got married about a year and a half ago, and um, I've just been like daunted to use it. It's like preseason, so that's checked off. But I have a dear friend who like only cooks with his cast iron skillet, but he's always like afterward, like, see, like it's on the stove and the burner's on and he's like watching it and it's like supposed to like smell anyway. And I'm just like, what are you doing? I don't know. I like my Calflon. Um, yeah, but I get frustrated because there's so many recipes that start on the stove top and then you're supposed to just put them in the oven, in an oven safe skillet. And I am always just like, Oh, I can't make that. Um, so anyway, I, just was a good challenge for me because I was like, I'm going to use my cast iron skillet. I'm going to get it out. I'm going to start like putting it in my repertoire. So, um, I did a few things. First of all, I just made chicken fajitas. That was really good in the skillet, but I decided not to share that recipe because it was just so easy. It was like cook some chicken, then cook some peppers and onions. Yum. Um, so I went searching for a different skillet recipe 
And um, you guys know how I love that cheese halloumi that I've talked about before that is kind of like the frying cheese. So I found a recipe for fried cheese and chickpeas in spicy tomato gravy. I'm supposed to make it in a skillet. So I did. So basically what you do is you have your big skillet and you heat it on medium high and then you add a little bit of olive oil and kind of swirl it around to coat it and then you have these slices of halloumi cut into um they're supposed to be about a quarter inch and then you just put them on and you fry both sides until they're golden and then you transfer to a plate um and they just are they're done there and then in the same skillet you add um a thinly sliced yellow onion um four finely chopped garlic cloves and then the spices are some cayenne some turmeric some ginger and some cumin and some cinnamon and you just kind of stir that all up until it's fragrant and then you throw in a little bit of salt um a can of diced tomatoes and two cans of um or sorry two cans of diced tomatoes one can of chickpeas and basically you just stir it up until it's kind of thickened um and it smells super good um and then you just cover it and let it just like simmer for about eight minutes it said i don't know it didn't really seem to make a difference to me it seemed like the same but i just followed the directions because it was the first time i was making this recipe um and then you can add more salt if you would like. And then to serve, you put the fried cheese on top and it kind of melts a little bit with the hot tomato stuff. And then you're supposed to top it with fresh cilantro and serve with flatbread. Um, so um, that was very yummy. Um, you could also, I think, easily serve with rice. Um, you could top it and kind of like, that would be really yummy too. Um, and I really liked it. It was really a unique flavor with like, it kind of went in a lot of different directions because like the turmeric and um, the, versus the cinnamon versus the ginger. It was, anyway, it was really cool. Um, I liked using the skillet. It was not that hard to clean. And so I'm going to continue to use it. Um, and uh, I really liked it. Um, and I think it's, I just love recipes that are one, one pan because it's just great and it was kind of fun I ended up eating it I was just by myself so I like didn't even use a plate I just had like bread and I was just like all right <laughs> we're not doing any dishes tonight so it was yummy I think I'll um I think I'll you know I won't make it all the time but I'll keep it in the repertoire Sounds super healthy. Where did, did you say where you got the recipe? Oh, um, no, I didn't. Um, I've just found it online. It's by a woman named Hetty Lou McKinnon. So, okay. um, which I loved her name as well, Hetty Lou. Um, so I will credit her in the, when I send in the recipe. Yeah, all those flavors sound so interesting together. And I just like, personally love the combination of cheese and tomato sauce so like that sounds amazing plus chickpeas yeah that sounds incredible I would definitely give that a try and I'm so glad you're using your skillet I know I'm finally fun tool. <laughs> one thing I thought of too that I thought would be good is if I were to make this in the summer um and I had garden tomatoes just the like you know grape oh, or cherry yeah. I think those would be fine. Like it called for the can of diced or, but I would use fresh and just kind of let them burst. And I think that would be delicious. So for sure. That sounds awesome. Um, yeah. All right. Well, as Beth would say, if we have no further comments, I will say thank you for watching recipe share and be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on AADL.org to find the recipes we talked about and do feel free to share your own in the comments. Join us next time when we will be uh, talking about trendy toasts. We're looking forward to seeing what you've been making. So thanks for sharing. Recipe share, recipe share, share a little recipe with